This is the Amp Hour Podcast, recorded July 1st, 2015, episode 256, with Chris and Alicia White. Is this the show? to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. I'm Alicia White of Embedded.fm. And I'm Chris White, also of Embedded.fm. The competition us, is guys. here, Dave. The they competition are. is here. Should we just <laughs> mute them now? We, we have the power, <laughs> don't we? That would be the best prank ever. It was just... <laughs> Welcome oh, to the show, mute. Yeah, Chris, I'm, I'm, I'm Alicia, I don't hear any response. End, we can we can respond for you. So here we go. <laughs> I'm recording on this end, so I've got a different oh, copy, crap. so I can make an alternative cut of the podcast. Podcasters. Well, it was the cut that I was worried about. If I start sounding like, and then software is stupid, <laughs> y- you know that's not really me, right? Who needs firmware when hardware <laughs> rocks? <laughs> is awesome. Well, technically, <laughs> this episode would not be possible if we're running on an eight-bit micro. It just it, if we had eight-bit memory, it just wouldn't work. That's Congratulations true. on reaching the ninth bit. Thank you. Yeah, bit. yeah, we flipped eight a bit. bit. <laughs> well, it kind of depends on if you count zero as a show. <laughs> technically, this is our two hundred and fifty-fifth show, is it? Mm-hmm. Oh no, that no, it's two. Big, no, we started from one, so it is the two fifty-six. See, it's always the off by zero error, oh, off by one error. Yeah, rather. it's like yeah. Yeah, I, forget what, I was reading the hell out of you every time. At least I'm not sure if I was reading your book or Michael Barr's book or someone about the, or I don't, or no no there's that, what's the one with the fish on it? There's a there's a sea book with a fish on the f- cover. You know what I'm talking about? No, it might be embedded programming at sea. I think yeah no it is that one and and it was it was just talking about like the history of why it was zero instead of one. Like someone had proposed why not start at one, but right when like when uh, Richie and K. Carnegie. <laughs> Who was it? <laughs> Sorry. K and R. Uh, K. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, something about like the zero versus the one. I don't know. So this this was decided a long time ago, Dave. That's what I'm trying to get to. Right. Okay. So what's the conclusion about all that? You're going Who to cares? Pick, we, we have flipped a bit, You're going to pick right? the wrong thing no matter what. Right. Exactly. Yep. 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 Anyway, we have flipped a bit, I'm sure. Let's just so declare it. Yeah. In ten, in ten episodes, it, right. or five episodes, it won't even matter. So, yeah. So, does this mean it's five years worth of episodes? Uh, in August, in August, it is. Oh, right. Yeah. We're, we've skipped, Congratulations! Thank you. We've really skipped cool. the odd week, haven't we? Here and there, you know, over Christmas time or something, we just go, ah, bugger it, <laughs> couldn't care less. Yep, it's close enough. But you guys are pushing there. What two, three years now? You guys get uh, just over two. Just over two. We hit 100, uh, we, and we do 50 a year. We right. seem to take two weeks off a year. You must be pulling in the big bucks like we are. Oh, yeah. After talking to, to Chris at Solid, definitely we're both pulling <laughs> in about the same big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> podcast pay, folks. Get into the podcasting business. One very, business. very large single-dollar bill. You can make <laughs> billions. Yeah. Billions, as Carl Sagan would say. We may be the only two podcasts not sponsored by Squ- right. though. Or Squ- Or Squ- <laughs> do you think we can oh, now we get them to we'll pay us for that? Because we did say Man, all the names. You know, uh, guys, I I actually did just uh, get a sponsorship offer from Spatula City. I don't know. If I, I saw the tweets. What's the that. deal there? I Spatula didn't get City. it. <laughs> Spatula City. Spatula it's just one of these late <laughs> night joke. ads on TV. It's uh, it's oh, from right, a movie no? that I'm surprised you haven't seen. Yeah, Saddened. What? Have, Saddened. What you haven't seen. Yeah. It's a uh, UHF. It's, oh, it's, it's the, the video from Weird UHF. The video from UHF. The video? That's what's what it was called. What's a it, it. I think it must oh have a, God, different a different title, title in Australia. here in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Really? It all goes a different direction. I've yeah. I, I've always yeah, known. Maybe I'm backwards. wrong, but I've always <laughs> known it as the video from UHF. Is it Weird Al? It, it is the Weird Al movie. Ah, here we go internationally. Released internationally as yes, the Vidiot from UHF. So it's only in Yankee Land there that's known as just UHF. There you go. Well, you yeah, mean where they made the movie. Yeah, but there is a, the a pretty place. big planet outside of you know <laughs> the US is like yeah. Anyway, 
Everywhere else in the Haven't world. Haven't heard of yes, it. Yes, the video from UHF. Ha, I'm right. Yay. <laughs> do they do they switch from Spatula City to like Barbie No, I don't town? think anything else has changed. No, I don't, I don't think any. Un- unlike some Australian okay. movies, which are changed for you silly yanks who just don't get stuff. You know, we are so, like The Castle, Such for example, as. a classic Australian show. I think it's called The Castle over there as well. And we we couldn't talk about our Holden cars, right? So we had to, you know, change the name of the cars in there. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what, what we're talking about. It's crazy. They actually dubbed in, you know, over the movie to make it more Yank friendly. <laughs> you know? Ford. <laughs> yeah, it was. Just, and, and there's other little things in there that they had, they had to change for you Yanks who were scared that you wouldn't get it. So, you know, well, and it wouldn't be as funny. So. What was the plot of Crocodile Dundee for you? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a love story, at least. <laughs> right. It's just, <laughs> just a it's movie a about a knife. Completely right? normal and accurate uh, <laughs> drama. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> it's not fiction, I'm telling you. The guy is really Crocodile Dundee. I've got one of his knives here in the lab. I open I've seen it, yeah. We've all seen yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think we can... Can we take a vote? The Vidiot from UHF is a far better name than just UHF. Uh, no. Yeah. Not, not, not co-signing. Uh, Can we uh, put that in the... Moment. No? Can we put no. that in the Ampower survey? I mean, this, you want to put that in the survey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, I guess two years ago I did put in, you know, who's who, what is the chip printer outcome? Uh, <laughs> right. So. And, and what was the result of that? I can't actually remember. It was pretty evenly spread across all levels of delirium. Um, <laughs> it will surprised. be done in 20 years. Yeah, yeah. It the best thing about surveys is the outliers. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Open forms, <laughs> that's the best thing. You just let people do their thing, and, you know, sometimes you get a page and a half in, like, a little Excel box. You're like, oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> yes, indeed. People yeah. wanted more dance numbers on our show. <laughs> really? Oh, and so I assume that's on the way? I wondered about the word "more" since I didn't think there'd been <laughs> any so far. You know, you you can hear you can hear the the jazz hands in your voices. It's just <laughs> I'm the dancing right it's, now. it's the joy. It's the joy. <laughs> Speaking of data, getting data like this, you want to know what I've just got? Every what? single comment ever posted on my YouTube channel in a spreadsheet, <laughs> in a oh searchable, God. sortable spreadsheet. The data mining that can you know how many instances of the word. Good lord, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know how many how many death threats did I get? You know, like <laughs> I can, I couldn't get like um all the well, there were a couple of programs out there that claimed to download all the YouTube comments, but they're all broken. So I had my um uh, cohort here, David, to actually write a little um software thing that sucked all the data from the YouTube. You know, it uh, <laughs> and they actually shut him down. They actually shut him down because they thought it was a denial of service attack, you know. <laughs> so, oops. so is this the sort of thing you? Is this the sort of thing that you read to yourself when you're feeling too good about yourself? <laughs> oh, dude, it's hilarious when I need to laugh my head off. Yeah, search the comments. Endle- and- endless, endless, mindless things from twelve year olds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, um, like uh, Dave after he wrote the thing and downloaded all the data, right? We were sitting there looking through it, and he went, "I bet you nobody has said the word moose." So I search for the word moose. Sure enough, there's like five. People have said the word moose five times in my comments. <laughs> like, and he just picked that out of red. Sure enough, it's there. Wow. So, yeah, I'm going to have fun mining the data for that. And yep, This is a good use for a word cloud. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Yes, yes. Is there, a, is there something, is there a word cloud like software I can get where I can just like feed it a spreadsheet and it, and it takes care of that for me? You can feed it a Word doc, I know, for Wordle. Right. So you Wordle? just take, cut and paste all of your text. Okay. That's Wordle? Interesting. I'll send you the link. I'm oh, pretty okay. sure that's yes. what it's called. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, we can I'll flatten that. all the Ampower uh, You know, stuff too. we went to the, the comments, but um, you, you, you didn't mention, I mean, we talked about the survey, but you didn't actually say that you have a survey going on. 
This is um, really hard because, you know, on my show, I have to control all this stuff and make sure we get back to, no, we have no, to go no, through no. there and make sure we, we talk about the things we're going to talk about, not just mention and go on. No, in, no, but, no. In, in the media, this is in your show. social media, <laughs> this is called uh, call to action. We must do a call to action, okay? This is the technical term. I think this is just Alicia being nice and taking care Come of on, us Chris, on Chris, where's your show. professionalism? I have none, Dave. Come on. This is, we're, we're having, we're having the embedded folks on. It's like, this is like a crazy cocktail party, you know? We're just we're we're gonna play Pictionary the whole time, <laughs> or something. Uh, but yes, we do have a survey. Twenty fifteen. We'd love to hear from you. There are blank spaces. Please don't fill them with total garbage. Fill them with real uh, opinions, even if your opinions are not very nice. Uh, we'd love to hear from everybody. And uh, yeah, that'd be that'd be actually really nice because you know we use that just to kind of keep tabs and and you know, we we can compare notes with the. And you guys did a survey as well, right? We did. We did. It was pretty amusing. Yeah. Um, the number of people who aren't hardware and software engineers was surprising. And the number of people who had really strong opinions about things. Hang on. They're not hardware people and they're not software people. Then why are they listening to an embedded podcast? Sorry. Don't get it. Um, Surely they must. were managers... A few were pure software instead of embedded software, but I had a good quarter oh, that were right. Okay, right. retired or dentists okay. or massage therapists. It was really Whoa. kind of a broad spectrum. Right. <laughs> Those outliers. I have on the no podcast. idea what it is. Yeah, <laughs> massage therapist. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, actually, I, I was I was getting a massage the other day, and the guy was so interested in my uh, YouTube channel, he uh, subscribed. So there you go. He knows nothing about engineering or electronics, but he liked my stuff, so he subscribed. <laughs> He's watching. He will soon. He'll know it at least yeah. a little bit. <laughs> wow. And we've had some guests outside the software hardware continuum and probably attracted people who listen to those yeah. episodes. Yeah, that's reason. good too. I mean, right? I mean, like that's Maybe. where you're going to find new people that are getting interested in firmware and software and hardware and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's that's real good. Uh, yeah. So, any other any other weird outliers in your uh, from your survey stuff like that? Uh, a lot of comments about not having cats back on. Oh yeah. 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 It was only the once, but we interviewed our cat. It I was posted it. on April Fool's Day, which means it's at least. Six uh, right, okay, I was going to say, but, you've, jumped, you've jumped the shark. <laughs> okay, but yeah. April Fool's, that's cool. Yeah. And it was 20 minutes long, so it wasn't like we really shirked and did a five-minute thing. It know, took wait. only six hours to edit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I had a really terrible idea for a, well, I think it was me, or it might have been somebody else, I don't know, a really terrible idea for an April Fool's thing that I had outsourced the EEV blog to India, so I was going to get like an Indian guy to actually... <laughs> Sit and do an entire episode and and just take the piss completely out of outsourcing, you know. So yeah, oops. That one, I don't know how that would have worked out, but it would have been hilarious. It would have it would have done something. The thing you have to worry about that is if, if they outdo you. Right, right. <laughs> so uh, okay, so we've gone through our craziness so far. Uh, what is new in the world of embedded? Guys, I mean, uh, hopefully, if people don't know, uh, Embedded is a podcast. Embedded.fm is a great podcast you guys run. Um, and people should be listening. But if they aren't, what have they missed? So many things. Um, <laughs> well, we do. It's pretty funny because we do have many listeners who listen to both shows. Um and that was partially because some of them came over after I talked to you a little over a year ago. Mm-hmm. And we tend to do more business and more art and, and education, education um, surrounding embedded hardware and software. And it's usually, we almost always have a guest, although we've decided we're going to do every five weeks. It's just going to be Chris and me talking about whatever we talk about. Okay. And our guests sometimes are really cool and sometimes are a little awkward and generally we want to have fun. So the laughter that you get on the Amp Hour, you'll see on Embedded FM as well. Periodically. Usually. All the time. Yeah, you guys, 
<laughs> yeah, we've had you guys uh, are cracking up. Yeah, we've had guests. Uh, we do. It's, it's a mix of very technical shows and not so technical shows, and that's sort of the way we like it. I think. Just yeah, kind of mixing things up, and uh, you know, we've had everywhere everything from people talking about management to people talking about low power and uh, microcontroller design. Embedded keywords. So do you have the same problem that we have in in uh, terms of like being able to talk about stuff because it's radio and you want to demonstrate it? Like you want to, you know, you're flapping your arms around or you're holding something and you want to, you know, you're trying to talk about it on radio, on radio in quote marks, you know, quote, quote, podcasts, yeah. but, you, you know, it's a visual thing and it just doesn't work. Yeah, we've tried that a couple of times to not very much success, I think. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the time we unboxed the Salie. Yes. I liked that, but you hated it. You unboxed you it, it on the podcast. <laughs> and plugged yes. it in and described the signals, but then I got lost in looking at the spy uh, protocols. Right. Right. It, it might not have been our best. Red line. I think it was like episode Green three. Green line. <laughs> now it's moving up. Now it's moving I guess down. it's great for visually impaired people, right? They... <laughs> I could just listen. I wish you guys could see this. I really do. <laughs> well, at Solid, though, I got a question about magnetometers and calibrating them, and I wanted mm -hmm. a whiteboard there. Yeah. But on the show, since I know it's radio, we usually manage to skip stuff. And I always fling my hands about when I talk, so... <laughs> I, think, I think the toughest one for that was uh, we had a very technical episode about common filters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, when Tony right. came on. Oh. And that, that was like a graduate level course in an hour <laughs> yeah. it was very intense and i'm not sure it came across that well because you did need kind of a blackboard or something right you needed to, to yeah. listen to that one two or three times and you've got to visualize every you know you've got to probably be experienced enough to visualize everything too which might be difficult well when i listen to podcasts usually when i'm doing something else so i try not to make it too too technical because i you know kind of assume somebody's driving or doing chores or running and i don't want to have to <laughs> right to you twice. don't want to distract them and cause a death <laughs> 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 there's a huge pile up on interstate 50 <laughs> reports are, <laughs> reports on the, the engineering district li listening to the embedded fm podcast <laughs> yeah. at least you can tell you how well i drive when i'm talking about physics or math <laughs> we can get lost coming home. I I had so when I was doing like a drive time rant video, I had so many people actually um you know uh, tell me don't do this, don't do this. We don't want you to die, you know, like like we really care about you. You shouldn't be recording video while you're driving. You shouldn't be talking while you're driving. You should be concentrating, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, the the safety police come out every time. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Without fail. But driving's special. Driving's that time where you get to think. Exactly. Oh. And if you have someone in the car, you're talking to them anyway, or a song's on the radio, you're singing along. It's like, how's it different, really? Yeah, so much of your, your senses are in autopilot. And everyone listening right now, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. That was just supposed to throw him uh, off. I don't know if that came through. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Great. Anybody crashes on Highway 85, it's your fault. No, you'll fall, yeah. find out on your yeah. survey. Right. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Current age, uh, dead. We'll get... <laughs> because of you. I really like the embedded show where you guys had the uh, the guy on from, from PayPal. That was a really unexpected show, actually, because it was PayPal. And he was talking about Go, I think, or similar language. Josh. Yeah. Yes. And Bluetooth, I think, right? He did a really good intro to Bluetooth. Yeah. I didn't even understand how good he, that intro was until I started working with it myself. Yeah. And I went back and listened to it. And I'm like, oh, he hit all the high points. Yeah, I was actually worried about that interview because it, it did seem like, well, wait a minute, PayPal? What, what are we getting here? Well, and he had a handler. Right. That was the first, uh, first show we had where they had somebody come along with him and take notes. Oh, right. Which was like a, a corporate little strange. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And the PR person wouldn't let me talk to him directly, so I was like, <laughs> screw it. He's got a Twitter account. Yeah, I can right. totally talk to him. <laughs> I don't know why you won't forward my emails along. 
Have we had that, Chris? Have we ever approached somebody and like a CL uh, or something? I have a vague memory of, of something like that happening. Yeah, but they haven't been on yet, so uh, <laughs> the the journey continues. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and, we, and, and we had somebody, didn't we, who shall remain nameless, who um, who wanted an appearance fee, didn't they? It was like, uh, how yes. much will you pay me yes. to do it? And it was surprisingly. <laughs> let's let's not name them. Because, and sadly, yeah. someone quite classic, unfortunately, it, has. Yeah. Yes, it was somebody who you wouldn't have expected it from. I guess. Yeah, I was quite. I was quite shocked. Yeah, we've never had that so. one. No, All people right. are usually either they say no, I don't have time, or they're very generous with their their time. Yeah. And I mean, most people have something they want to talk about, something if not sell, at least be known for. Yeah. And that's usually enough. One of the yeah. questions we ask before we start recording is usually, why are you on the show? And the oh, answer is almost universally, that, Chris? because yeah. you asked. Because <laughs> huh. you asked, yeah, exactly. That's... I wasn't smart enough to say no. That was the other <laughs> <laughs> I heard there would be punch and pie. <laughs> no, no punch and pie? I told there would be cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nate said I, that we wouldn't, that that was the only way he could get us to feed him dinner, so that was sort of. Make, <laughs> no, I would have fed you anyway. You this was all just fine. In-house guests, do you do you make people dinner? Is that is that like no, part of the deal? No. no, let's not start. Let's not start okay. that rumor. Because I I I could be on your show anytime. There's only in... one person, and he was coming yeah. to dinner first. Okay, okay. fine. No dinner. <laughs> I make pizza, so and that's next? really all. Yeah. Sleepover and pillow fights. <laughs> <laughs> Stay up till two thirty in the morning talking <laughs> talking about it. No thanks. I sleep at night. So is this the show? Yeah, this is the show. Oh, okay. This, it is. this right here. Are we supposed to be arguing about switch to bouncing? We are. <laughs> this right here. <laughs> um, yes, uh, switch to bouncing should be done in hardware. My processor has better things to do than to fix your stupid broken hardware. Ah, but what if you don't want to go back to the hardware engineer and say, "I don't like the way you're doing it." Screw switch debouncing. It's too overrated. Screw it. <laughs> I like that. You should just Why do they build it into the switch? That's what I want to know. <laughs> That'll work great on a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, we can have, yes, we'll, we'll have an Internet of Things switch that, you know, debounces via the cloud. What do you think? Mm. Yep. Are you stealing my joke, man? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's records of that joke. I think there are. There's Twitter what? records. There's no there. records of what time this recorded. Right, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, right. So I'm not the first to... Uh, I'm, sh- I'm just devastated. I'm not the first to think of a cloud bounce, a uh, cloud switch debouncer. That's yeah. so wrong. That could have been the next April Fool's joke video. We could have made a, you know, build it into a little surface mount tactile switch, you know. There are still lots of Internet of Things you can make fun of. You know, the 555 uh, Internet-based cloud thing. Wait, is that really a thing? I haven't seen that. Is that a thing? I just made it up. Uh, (laughs) It should be a thing. I'd like to invest in this. Uh, Can I invest in this somehow? It's on the Internet. (laughs) Kickstarter going up today. So, uh, speaking of the Internet of Things, and at the risk of changing topics to something serious... Okay. No, what? please do. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a show, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, this is not. This is uh, not the pre-recording. This is just at solid. Yeah. Yes. Is that it? Solid con. <laughs> solid con. O'Reilly, San Francisco, last week. You guys talk about it. Alicia, is this what Chris was having there. a producer? Is I met like, him there last year. <laughs> where it's just like uh, the producer just says, "Yeah, oh, about you talk he about." Tells me things like. That. <laughs> okay. Oh, like yeah, slip exactly. your note, you know. Yeah. Usually it's over. I am. Right. You guys made fun of me because you thought I was telling Christopher what to do. Now you know which way it really goes. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying not to laugh. He's really trying not to. Laugh. I wish I'd timed that for when he was taking a drink. <laughs> yeah, spit take. But yeah, so uh, okay, we got to see each other con. solid, and that was yeah. Great. Come on. So what happened? Uh, oh, yeah. go ahead. What is solid con for those who don't? No, and I don't really know what's there. It's I don't know. I haven't the faintest. Not really. Right. I mean, it even was though you went nominally the conference for hardware, software, and the Internet of Things, 
which doesn't explain why one of the keynotes was a race car driver. Another of the keynotes was a chemist from Wrigley about how to do bubble gum, and there was a whole track on biology. Yeah, so, you of know, course. It, it was sort of a random conference. Wasn't there an internet-connected pot plant? Well, that was the thing. I went up and said, so BLE and plants is becoming really, really popular and sort of ubiquitous. How is your startup, because they were like in a little startup competition thing how is yours different and he said we focus only on cannabis <laughs> <laughs> future's weird this is like okay. this is like the uh this is like the uh ted conference of the hardware world is it is that what it, yes you know it's just like completely random stuff it is i mean there's there's manufacturing and there's but it's all sort of slick and glossier than i expected from like an engineering conference. Yeah. So do they have like booths and like a trade show and like yes. is is there like a floor where, you know, people, you know, spruik their wares? There's an expo floor and Chris would know more about his wares than I do. Yes, I Oh, was... that's right. I saw a photo of you on the stand. Yes, I was hawking I was hawking software wares that for the hardware folks. So, yeah. Um uh, <laughs> Right. It was it was interesting. I mean, uh, you know, you get people coming by, but uh yeah, it was I mean, like Lucy said, it's it was just it, it was, was such boring. A, Admit it, Chris. It was boring. No, it wasn't <laughs> boring. It, it was just such a weird mix, you know, like and so it was nice. I mean, so there's a lot of great great stuff, right? So I got to see a lot of a lot of people that I, I already knew. Like people have been on the show and get to see them again, like uh Noah from AKA Media Systems and obviously Alicia and uh, you know, a certain person was at home sick, so that wasn't as cool. Uh, but he'll be forgiven for that. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and so it was. Come on, just was... just admit it. You were sitting there on the stand, going, "Please, somebody come and talk to me. Please, I've got really cool shit. Please, come on." Your booth wasn't empty all the time. No, I walked by a lot. Yeah. <laughs> It was okay, and I mean, like, like we said, I mean, like, like, she like, ta- like, like, talking no, no. to the to, to the startups <laughs> and everything was fun. I mean, that that was cool, and like the um, the uh, so Seed Studio was there, and they were doing some cool stuff. They actually were they had a pick and place on hand. All right, and so yep. it was just it was just eclectic, you know, like okay. like it was just there was a a bunch right. of disjointed stuff but that's kind of the that's kind of the feeling that it all is right now anyways right there's platforms everywhere like everybody's like oh i want to be a platform for the data of internet of things and and someone else says i want to be the software that goes <laughs> oh, into the God. platform of the internet of things and then and then i turn around and I go and where the <laughs> hell is the hardware and and no one no one knew so <laughs> it's, out, it's out there somewhere yeah though. Um, hardware uh, they were like oh aren't you just gonna like 3d print that and yeah, like, hard, hardware is just commodity, you know. It's just you well, know. Yeah, you yeah. just buy a, a module, and uh, yeah, you know, you plug the power in, and you're done. Use an Arduino IDE to program it in like Node.js or something. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. I don't know. There was a guy who wrote a book about. I think Node.js is is that a thing? It is a thing. No, it totally is. A thing. He was very yeah, excited totally. to tell me about it. Yeah. This is how much I remember. He was nice. <laughs> Yeah, but I do feel like uh, a lot of the hardware has gone to these little modules, right? Yeah, yeah, and and there's there's incentive for the hardware s- to sellers to keep doing that, right? Like p- people pay big money to go to this conference. No, like, most of yeah. us spoke there in order to get to go to the conference and <laughs> get a free ticket. Didn't didn't well, you say, Chris, that it was like a couple of grand, or somebody said it was a couple of grand to go? It, it was. It was like yeah. 2,000, 2,500 the day of. Um, there were wow. cheaper tickets earlier. Wow. It was sort of like the Maker Fair for grown-ups. If you took out all the kids and made it just slightly more professional, mm-hmm. but you kept <laughs> it sort of frantic and crazy and all the weird stuff that might or might not be useful in five years. <laughs> that, that was... Is, it was more like Maker Fair without kids than anything else. Do you, think, do you think it'll settle down in a few years? I mean, it's only been around for two years. They, I'm sure there was no fire and shit blowing was... up and stuff like that, right? Right. This well, time. I mean, there might have been at that booth with the Internet of Things and plants. <laughs> Stilt walkers and... <laughs> right, right. Well, there was Jugglers the and... <laughs> giant robotic music thing. 
Um, uh, oh, I'm oh. sorry, but you're not selling it to me. You know, <laughs> I am not sold. Sorry, I'm not going to jump on a plane and pay twenty five hundred bucks to go to SolidCon. <laughs> well, maybe that's a better question, though. I mean, like, I had to wonder yeah. how many people actually paid to be there. I mean, all the sponsors did. Well, what what are what are people going to anyways these days, right? Like, what are conferences that that people are really into? I just with the internet, you know, the internet has replaced a lot, and I think I don't think they care. We've it's a junket. A lot of this. Well, it's maybe. a junket. That's it. People aren't going to pay this out of their own pocket, right? They got, it's mostly yeah, they, they companies. They price it like, that way because it's companies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Companies pay it. It comes out of their, uh, you know, their educational budget or, or whatever, you know. But who has that and anymore? A week in San Francisco when it was—I mean, I got sunburned. <laughs> it was really quite warm. Yeah, um, it was nice, and yeah. it was beautiful, and it was interesting. I felt like there were a couple of talks I got good information out of. Hey, I got dead but- kits, and I didn't go. <laughs> but you didn't get twenty five hundred bucks worth of value. If you spent your own dosh on this, would you be talking it up as much? No, but that's I mean that's the thing with the Riley conferences, the the deal is you get a speaker pass. That's the way you go. Right, yeah, of, I, right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't give a toss. It compares to the embedded systems conference and that's uh eighteen hundred dollars. Oh, okay. So it's not Out. totally outrageous. Right. I mean, usually at these sort of things, like the like the floor is free. Like if you want to, right. like go visit the thing, like for the over the three days or whatever, it's free. You can just wander around, do whatever. But if you want to go to the talks, then usually you've got to buy a package or something. That's how um, yeah. the ones I've been to work. This, this is the same. I don't yeah, know this if the like... hall was free. I guess they had door guards, so yeah, it was forty five bucks. If you right. if you like shared it on Facebook, it was quote unquote free. You know, like if you gave them your info. You were worth forty five dollars <laughs> to them. So, Facebook yeah. fail right there. Anyone who's on Facebook has instantly failed. <laughs> Facebook is bullshit. Like, and yet companies have to tick it off their KPI, right? Key performance indicator every month. Oh, how much social interaction did we get on Facebook? How many people could we pay? How much money did we have to spend to get people to like our crap on Facebook? It's ridiculous. You know what this is telling Stop me? it, people. We can host an Amp Hour Facebook page. We can have whatever we want on there. <laughs> we, have, we have one. It's it's very... Yeah. Wait, no. You've already got, like, a Facebook page. Yeah. Well, I've got a Facebook page for the EV blog, but I never visit it or read it. I've got a, a bot that automatically posts to it and posts my videos to there because some people like to get it in their Facebook feed. Okay. Well, fair enough, but don't comment on there because I don't read it. Sorry, I hate Facebook. Can't stand it. <laughs> really? I could never have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, somebody back me up. I no, hate I, Facebook. I, I hate I Facebook. I never go there. Thank you. Uh, somebody somebody once said to me that, that Facebook is where you go to find out you hate your family and friends, and Twitter <laughs> right. is where you go to find out that you like people you don't know. Oh, I like that. that's, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. yep. That actually works I out pretty well. Like yeah. Yeah, although Twitter's been edging more toward hating people for me, but that's fine. That's what the unfollow right. button is for. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you're right, yeah, and and the block button, yeah. If people start, start you know, spamming your uh, thread thingy, your window thingy with... don't even know what the bloody terms are for these things. <clears throat> it doesn't feed. matter. Your feed or whatever it is, I don't know. Anyway, if people... People start, you know, like 10 posts in a row to your feed, and that's all you're seeing is this person on a block. You know, it's great. Problem solved. That's what I do. I unfollow more people than I follow. Soon I will have negative people I follow. <laughs> right. uh, so you guys are, you mentioned uh, you're going to ESC. I, I heard that on your last show too. But where do people go? I mean, that's the thing. Like, I don't, that's what I don't get still. I don't get where. Are conferences like just not worth it anymore for everything or Yeah, the major ones are I don't I don't know. ESC, there's ESC, there's solid, and there's the smaller ones like Arm Tech Con. Design con. Oh, yeah. Design con. You know, I've been to ESC and Design Con. And design con. Yep. Yeah. I am going to uh I'm going to XOXO this year, I think. Up in Portland. What's that? It's like actually an art and tech in technology. That's together. more of a Cultural. Yeah. This is kind of like South by Southwest, except in Portland, right? 
Right. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of excited about that. I'm not sure. I, I, well, and South by Southwest has been a. Everybody seems to go. I I've been wondering if we should. It's a. It's like. Is it worth the effort? A week of yeah, it's like a week of insanity down there. So I'm not. I don't know personally, but, um, uh, I love Austin. So I used to live there. But I don't necessarily want to go back now. We're during it South by. That's the main thing, you know. Sorry, all this stuff is foreign to me. Being in Australia. We don't have any of this. It's literally no. foreign to you. Well, we well we have a Maker Fair coming up. You know, mini Maker Fair. It's kind of exciting. You know, that's about as exciting as it gets around here. Oh, we have our logo. You know, we have our yearly show. We have our yearly tech show. But you know, that's yeah. It's not huge. It's pretty tiny. If you've seen video of me walking around it, but I have had my own stand, which is kind of exciting. But that won't happen again this year because this year it's Melbourne. So it alternates between Sydney and Melbourne. There's no way I'm lugging all my crap to Melbourne, you know. So, well, I wouldn't be able to go by plane. I'd have to, like, load up the car or hire a van or something and, you know, take everything with me and drive to Melbourne. No, thanks. But to answer your question, Chris, I don't know that there's a tech conference that I would go to Boston for. Let alone pay two thousand dollars for. I mean, I, yeah. I don't like to travel, so going somewhere to a conference would be—it'd have to be a good conference. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Like, I mean, uh, for example, the only fine. reason I'm going to go to the Melbourne one again this year is because it's the only one. I mean, it's the only thing in Australia. So you know, why not? Right? It's you yeah. know. I mean, it's just—it's surprising. It's surprising to me that the fact that that like we're we're all online, right? And people are hungry to meet the people that they, you know, interact mm. with on Twitter or, you know, podcasts or wherever people do. Facebook, yep. you know, three out, of, three out of the four people down here don't want to. But, you know, most people on Facebook. And, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, so I don't – that's the thing that I don't understand is, like, there, there must be a real-world place that people want to meet. Burning Man? Even, like, uh, mm, you yeah. know <laughs> – so, uh, like anti-social nerds like me, um, yeah, like I actually do like going to these things and actually meeting people, and you know, and uh, fans actually coming up is really good. It's always good. Yeah, but I don't feel like I get a lot of knowledge from it. I mean, no, I've been speaking at them, no, so I feel like I'm right. handing knowledge out, but I don't feel like I'm get, gaining a lot. No, same here. I don't gain anything from it. It's just a fun thing to do and hang out, you know, and sort of yeah. No, I don't. I I don't think I've ever learnt anything going to any of these conferences uh, or uh, you know trade shows. Really, you know, there's occasional thing I might see. You know, g- gadget I might see that I haven't seen before and go, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, but yeah, like as far as doing it as a like a, a financial and time investment for learning, it's a you know just that aspect is fairly poor. Poor, I think. Yeah. When I switched from software to embedded, I did go to the Embedded Systems Conference sponsored by my company and went to as many sessions as I could. Mm. And that was the last time I learned a lot there. Now right. mostly I go and beg for dev kits, which even that I'm not <laughs> yeah. going to do this year. <laughs> well, and I think a lot of people go to these things because they want to make deals or they're working on a product and they want to go on the show floor and talk to a bunch of people. Uh, and that's not, I mean, that's not the business that we're necessarily in. All right. That's true. The times I've gone with a plan, like the year I needed these parts. So Im- embedded crew. Uh, I mean, like, wh- where where are you guys learning learning stuff these days? I mean, when you're, I mean, obviously both of you both consult. You both consult still, right? You're both doing projects. Um, what what are you what are your what are your main resources these days? I think I learned uh, me personally. I learned better by doing. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when I, when I was younger, I learned a lot from books and, you know, school, but afterward, I don't know. I mean, I learned everything by on the job training almost after, after that. Well, and I'd read magazines, circuit yeah. seller usually. So trying to keep up now, you I know, don't even read those. follow stuff on the internet. You know, if, if a new dev, dev kit arrives, I usually spend a few hours messing around with it, um, well, the horrible yeah. part is sometimes I do my learning by inviting guests on the show. I mean, why do you <laughs> really think Andreas from Atmetal came on the show? Right. <laughs> I needed to know more about how he was doing his power monitoring. Yeah. yeah. The, the so. annoying thing about learning is that it takes time, 
right? Uh-huh. And if you're too busy actually doing stuff or producing stuff, like you just don't have time to learn. Well, that's why that's why I try to occasionally do stuff or, or make something that I wasn't expecting to or, or just push right, the boundaries yeah. a little bit. So I do have to learn something while I, while yep. I do my job. Totally. See, this is actually convincing me that Solid wasn't that strange and bad because I did learn things I didn't expect to. I didn't learn... I didn't learn the technologies that I wanted. That I, I, There was a, secu- a session about security and Bluetooth and medical. And I was like, okay, this will just solve all sorts of problems for me. And it turned out to have nothing to do with any of those, I think. No. And it was okay. more of an advertisement for their business. So it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted something <laughs> technical. But then listening to Noah Freehan's um listening table and how he built this really cool thing and then he went on to talk about how it works in the real world and how that's a part of his new york times job that was neat and it made me think of outside the box and outside of the technology into more i don't want to say humanitarian things but more applied more social oriented things real world type um, application and then right? i went to a session about monitoring the power grid and that was cool i've yeah. got to say that i'm every day i'm learning something new actually because you know i'm like reading comments like i'm on the forums there's always something people are sending me things and there's i always see something and learn something almost practically every day i don't think a day goes by just you know bumming around the internet you learn stuff you know it's like Always yeah, but something there's, new. There's cursory learn, knowledge, but in terms like of like formal learning, like yeah. yeah, and and formal learning, right? Like, oh, I'm going to learn how to program in VHDL, right? And yeah, right. You've got to go spend you know weeks and weeks at it, right? To actually do that, rather than you know, but there, yeah, there's lots of little you know, but you're always learning little snippets like every day. And it's like a, a lot of people ask me that they go, "How do I get my no- you know, How did I get my knowledge in engineering? You know, did you learn? How did you learn all this?" And I go, "I just, it's it's my hobby and my job. I've done it every day for the last, you know, <laughs> more than th- well over thirty years. Um, and yeah, you just pick up stuff every day, and you continue to learn every day. I like Twitter for that. I do get." You know, links to blog posts that Same I wouldn't here. otherwise see. Yep, yep, totally. And yeah. uh, and and then if I see, you know, if I see a real, you know, if I see a crappy product, I'll go and debunk it, and I'll learn a hell of a lot doing that. You know, just going through the process and things like that. And yeah, almost yeah. everything, every video I do, I learn something. One of the things I found was that teaching is a really great way to learn because you're really forced to understand things if you're going to tell somebody else how to do it. And men- mentoring uh, folks and companies. Um, Even te- writing these blog posts. Teaching while in grad school. I, I understood things after doing that that I realized later I really hadn't understood until I had to teach it to somebody else. So I think right. you yep. know, doing the EV blog stuff and, and contextual electronics, I think you guys have to have honed your knowledge just to prepare for that, right? Yeah, and I mean, when you when you're learning, when you're when you're teach rather when you're teaching people, I think that that you know that that kind of solidifies it mostly out of social pressure, right? There is there and there is a lot of social pressure on a lot of these things, even on Twitter and everything else, right? This is this is a pressure, I think that's pretty ubiquitous, kind of in in the social social age. It's just like, I see what you guys are doing, right? On embedded, I, I see what Dave's doing because he posts his videos all the time. I I look at like Ben Kras now. I look at you know everybody who's doing video, Alan, everybody who's doing videos online and and talking online and all these other things, and it always feels like it's not enough. And and that's that's because a separate you, issue, I think. But because you, know, you think that, you should be doing all of those things, right? Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I mean, like, the same way. I I sh- why why am I not better at embedded stuff, guys? I mean, come on, I I need to learn this stuff, right? Why can't I fix my own car? This, this sort of thing kills yeah. me every day. I go, geez, I'd love to do a video on that, but I like I I just can't. I can't produce ten videos a week. It's physically impossible, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just it it takes time to produce content. I'd love to be able to just you know rattle. I should just you know leave the live camera on twenty four hours a day and just have a live you know Truman Show type channel or something where I just keep talking, you know. Yeah. Like, but it's yeah no, <laughs> it's a very poor way to disseminate yeah. you know information and stuff. But yeah, I see I mean, so much stuff I want to 
I think all try these years, too, like, teach, but, yeah. you just got to try. I mean, some of this stuff, you just got to try it, right? I mean, like, I think that's mm. a, true a lot of the program languages. Personally, I just I just did a reflow in my home lab for the first time ever. I don't know if you guys have yep. ever done that on, like, a hot plate. It turned no. out to be pretty simple. But yeah. uh, once you do it, you know, it's scary until you do it. So you got to just kind of jump in. That's very true. We had a listener offer to help us learn Altium, um, Philip, oh, yeah. and it was a very nice offer. And it made me had to admit that I have lots of things I want to learn, and that isn't highest on my list this week. Yeah, right. And I would only yeah. learn that if I needed it for something. I can't just learn tools. That's the thing. I mean, it's like, oh, go learn a programming language. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah you need a project, really. I mean, so so what what is on your list? I mean, because like, let's come on, let's get the let's do come on, Dave, let's do an interview here. Uh, uh, Alicia, Chris, <laughs> what is on your list of things that you want to be learning here? Um, I would like to get better at electronics. Although, as I play with more dev kits and things, I wonder why because it really <laughs> is becoming just this plug a module together thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't really have a good fundamental understanding of it. Okay. So when I get into trouble with things like three point three versus five. Um, you know, I don't, oh, I don't know what to do. God, this needs five volts. Well, I guess I can stick a transistor here, but I don't really understand what that means. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so fundamentals like that, I'd like to get better at. Um, but you know, I have so many things I want to do that it it becomes overwhelming, and I end up doing nothing because right, I used yeah. to do just outside yeah. of software and things. I used to do a lot of astrophotography and telescope stuff. Mm. Uh, I do a ton of music, so it's very hard for me to focus and. And yet I do feel this pressure that I should be getting better at everything. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I have some little because... projects. I, I, I picked up one of the photon dev kits from SolidCon and I turned it into an internet connected garage door opener in just a few hours, which was both cool and discouraging in a way because it was so easy that it didn't yeah. feel like I'd done <laughs> <Right>. anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the problem with the communications revolution these days is that you just see so many things that you want to do and learn. It's overwhelming. Well, Chris Gamma was saying about how that can make you feel bad. I try to fight that because you right. do because you, you hear everybody's. I don't know. Was it MythBuster or Adam Savage who said that's everybody's billboards? You're seeing their highlight reel. Yep. You're not seeing right. their whole movie. Yep. It's it's a documentary, and all you, all you're seeing are the good stuff. Yeah. Right. And. You know, I've had people say, how do you get so much done? And I'm like, by telling you only the good stuff. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. I've got a pile of dead boards in my lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jerry did a really good video about that, too, where she just kind of showed all the broken stuff. Like, it was just... It was great. I mean, just like yeah, you learn by failing. Yeah, or... it's yeah, yeah. How do you make your own transistor? She said, "Look, it took me five years and all this, you know, failures to make my own transistor." You know, yeah. like, you know, and and she she makes it look easy, right? And then, yeah, yeah and that's even more accelerated in software because we'll fail two hundred and sixty times a day, <laughs> right? Until we get something that's <laughs> right. right, and we'll just until keep you going get something that compiles, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a little bit twisted because. In hardware, you have to you do have to plan ahead unless you want to burn through a lot of a lot of gear. Yeah, I'm really sorry I blew up that nine volt battery. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it would work that way. <laughs> I but, I used to like when uh I used to have an embedded guy I work with, and he he would he would give me these amazing phrases <laughs> where he'd be like, uh, Chris there's noise and be like uh you mean it's not working <laughs> he's like yeah that's what i mean <laughs> or uh it's it's not working today and, I, and i'm like you mean you burned out the power supply he's like yeah that's what i mean there's <laughs> 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 all these code words of like I'm like it's like an abstraction of like ways that he broke things and it was uh you know he was brilliant i mean like like one of the best engineers i've ever worked with but like just i'm just like dude <laughs> Let's say things like they are. <laughs> I well, never when felt I put worse this than when I broke hardware. Yeah. <laughs> no, no coming back from that one. Oh dear, oh dear. <sighs> Alicia, what is what's on what's on your list? I mean, what what are, what are you what are you looking to learn? What am, that's kind of tough because um, I'm you know kind of all over the place and getting over a cold, which makes me even more frantic. Um, 
We can go to like a six month timeline if you really feel comfortable. <laughs> right. You know, like it's not like Where would you quick. Like to be in five years. <laughs> what are you looking to do in the next five minutes? <laughs> Um, I'm doing more and more low power stuff and I've been doing it for a while and all the software isn't a mystery. It, optimizing is fun. Mm -hmm. Um, that is mm -hmm. even assembly language optimization is fun, far more fun than useful, but <laughs> far more fun than useful. <laughs> There's a great t-shirt quote, assembly language, far more fun than useful. <laughs> um, but I've been doing like measuring power for different boards. And I wrote an Element 14 blog post about it, and it was while I was still feverish. So there are a whole bunch of errors in it. And reading back, I realized that there are things that I don't truly understand about the low level, why you need this power rated resistor, and under what circumstances you need stuff. I even got one of Dave's e, uh, microcurrents. Microcurrents, oh, right. Nice. nice. And, um, well, you don't necessarily need it. You can shove a resistor in there. You can build your own. It's, it's, it's just a resistor at a times 100 amplifier. Yeah, that's what I but, thought it should be. It didn't show me what the resistor showed me. And the different resistors didn't show me what I expected them to show me. And this TI oh, board okay. I have so doesn't were, show me the same thing either. Right, so you're putting a shunt resistor in, in series with your supply of your product yeah. and it wasn't showing what you thought it was showing. And there are lots of tweaky bits about that. And that goes back to teaching is, is a way to figure out that you don't know something very well. Yeah. Um, because I can say, oh, yeah, you get a 10 ohm resistor. I mean, you look at how much amp you expect, probably using a DMM, and then you, you get a 10 or 100 ohm resistor and you make sure it can handle lots of power. And then you use that and then you can use an oscilloscope. And so these things I can like talk through. But when you get down to, well, how much power does this resistor need? And under what conditions does it matter that you're doing other things? And and how much role is decoupling playing and, and all so, sorts of stuff like that? Like right now, that's a very solvable problem. And I suspect by the end of the week, I will be totally golden on that particular subject. But all those little things of the electronics at a level beyond where I need it for software. Yeah. And All right. I keep masquerading that with, or, um, confusing that with doing schematic capture. And those are not the same things. So I keep saying I want to do schematic capture. What I really want to do is understand the electronics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of that's vernacular it seems like too, right? Cause it's, you know, Dave's Dave quickly jumped into like, Oh, well, like a hundred X amplifier and a, you know, a resistor, a sense resistor and stuff like that. And like, <laughs> I can imagine that being, very uh, off-putting at the beginning. Just like if someone came in and started talking about uh, pointers and oaring stuff in and that kind of thing. Have Have you guys been, uh, you know, public face professionals? You know, like easily found on the interwebs. Um, have you ever had lawyers approach you, like asking you to be an expert witness in any? court case because i've i've had it like two or three times now and i just got another one last night i haven't nope um i think everybody nope. here would go with michael barr instead because he actually has that as part of his business yeah thing i think jack does who's too. michael barr sorry um he wrote the first o'reilly embedded software book um and yeah jack Ansel. if i if i had to prove software i would go with jack yeah yeah michael oh and, right was, okay right he was involved in the toyota yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Unintended oh, was he? Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, they got him in as an expert witness. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, but, but I think yeah, that, I've, that's yeah. a big enough uh, time commitment that, that has to be kind of part of your gig, I think. Oh, that's why I told him to bugger. I've told him to bugger off every time. It's like, <laughs> why? What's in it for me? And and they always say, but but we will, you know, give you a retainer and pay you a professional rate. It's like, no, I have better things to do, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Some of my coworkers at ShotSpotter um, had to do the professional or had to do the expert witness thing to explain ShotSpotter, and they said it was really fascinating. I mean, it was it was not something I, I, they wanted to do it regularly. Would be, yeah, but once. Yeah, it, I, I've always wanted to do the jury thing. I got called up once, but then they cancelled it. I've never had to do it. I yeah, I think it would be fascinating, but you know, I'm not gonna. You know, um, yeah, I don't want to wait. I got look. We to see do a lawyer in his native element. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is, peering well, through the, in, the court in, stand. In this, in this case, they wanted me to come to Malaysia 
to, you know, appear in court in defence of some dude who I won't tell you what he's accused of, but anyway, it, it, it relates to one directly to one of my videos, and they wanted to use one of my videos as evidence and also have me as an expert witness. So I told them to bugger off, but I said, oh, you know, look, you're free to use the video. And then they came back and, and said, oh, for, for us to use the video, we really need a letter from, you know, a statutory declaration thing from you signed signed in blood by 20 JPs or something. Um, anyway, we need something like that saying that you're the owner of the video and it is you who are appearing in the video. It's like, are you shitting me? Bugger off. You know, it's like, God, why? What's in it for me? No, <laughs> go away. You didn't ask so, for cash at that yeah. point? Because I forget lawyers, they always have plenty well, of I, cash. Well, I, I could have. Like, yeah, yeah they will pay, well... <laughs> They yeah they said yeah we were how much to write a re- and they wanted me to write a report too, and they said I'm like how much you know quote please how much to write a report and it's like no sorry you know no I don't want to be dragged down the rabbit hole I got better things to do with my time than you know yeah if you want to be involved in the yep. legal system it's probably better to become a patent lawyer with your technical expertise at this point. Oh, my brother-in-law is a um, he's a PhD in laser physics and he's a patent attorney. And uh, he tried to convince me that when he changed careers, right, and became a patent attorney, because he never wanted to be, but there were, there's not that many jobs in laser phys- physics here in Australia. So, you know, yeah, the wife made him go out and get a real job. And he retrained as a <laughs> patent attorney and he tried to drag me into it. Come on, look, you know, with your engineering expertise, you know, you can be a shit hot, you know, <laughs> patent attorney. Oh, my Oh, a fate worse than death. <laughs> Pass. Yeah. It sounds lucrative, but not much fun. At least not to me. I want to build totally. stuff. Totally. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Charging per five minutes. You know that they, they they actually have like a timer on their desk where they actually have to bill per five minutes. Yeah. You know. God, I I hate weekly timesheets. You know, let alone five minutes. You know. Like, yeah. So Al, what do you what do you guys uh, what do you guys you said you want to build stuff? What are you guys building these days? Uh, that one I can't talk about. Um, oh. I can't talk, talk about, about what I'm being paid to build. Uh, well, I gave that inertial talk, and I built the little LED inertial widget that I'm trying to convince everybody is like a hello world for sensors. Mm. That one I can oh. talk about. The shaking to blinky? Is that the... Uh, you can sort use of. That. <laughs> Shake to blinky. It's got three modes and an accelerometer mode. It it shows you which way is down. It's red, green, okay. blue LED, and X, Y, Z. And, and then, it, I mean, that lets you say acceleration is almost always gravity and then the gyro in that mode it's usually dark because gyros are boring unless you're moving and then you can talk about Mm. how gyros um, are about motion and gestures and if you can give that to a designer who wants to do gesture recognition and say okay what colors do you see it gets easier (laughs) well (laughs) what am I on right now (laughs) (laughs) And then it does a little light compass. Oh, cool. And so That's cool, yeah. People, people get so freaked out by sensors. It's like, it's not yeah. that hard. I mean, sure, once you get to Kalman's and Quaternions, it gets a little more difficult. But just the sensors, they're, more, they're totally worth it. They're fun. What do people get freaked out about? Um, well, when you are doing a light compass, you do have to do a bit of trigonometry. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. What's that? That's that like Pythagoras thing, right? With like, yeah, that I learned in like primary school, Sines, right? Cosines. Ugh. Mathematician over Math. here is crying Ugh. in his chair. <laughs> Arctangents, man. Arctangents everywhere. Yeah. It's oh, fun, yeah. really, guys. Look up. Wait, do you guys do that? Do you do that in lookup tables or what? Oh, I'm 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 running Cortex things, so I'm just going using the math library and letting it fake floating point. I oh, okay. do boo, not do that. Boo. I don't do that. <laughs> I, I generally have lookup tables. For, yeah. Well, Yay. it depends on how accurate you need to be. For the stuff oh, I'm yeah. doing, get to, you know, it can get by with. And for the light how much box, RAM though. you've got, how much embedded RAM and yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah, I'm constantly frustrated in my paid work by this whole embedded thing. I, I didn't start out as <laughs> embedded. You know, I, I started at Cisco <laughs> and we had plenty of resources and uh you know Memory I worked as to... far as the eye could see kids yeah and then i went to work for a couple of uh, medical startups and you know they were pc architecture based so it was like gigs of ram and this and then i you know yeah. got into the embedded world i'm like what do you mean i have 128k of ram there's a typo yeah. here 
That yeah, key should right. be an well, M. Well, 128 K, luxury, man, luxury. <laughs> you sent that email where you what meant you... to say 256 byte array. I filed a bug. Bites. Yeah, no, I filed yeah. a bug and I said yeah. 256 K everywhere because my brain couldn't manage to say 256 <laughs> bytes. Oh I can't be that small. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> What am I going to do with this? 256. Come on. That's nothing. <laughs> yeah, so I that project I did for the inertial talk for solid, and then I have an ESC talk about something, about mm, makers. Maker maker. Yeah. yeah. Was, why? Why? I what listened was I to that. No, you I you heard can't this. diss your own talk before you give it. Oh, right. No, it would be great. There's a awesome. picture of a cephalopod. Maybe two. There you go. Winning. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have any neat gadgets for that. Although I may break down the talk and look at other people's neat gadgets. So I've heard on your show before, and I agree with it. You guys talk about, or at least Alicia, I'm not sure about Chris if you agree as well, but talk about robots and that's the best way to get started. But I have a, I have a more probing distant question. If you could go back in time and talk to your former selves, would you still recommend Embedded? Yes. Yes, definitely. It was great for me. It, it is great. Continues there are things I would like to do differently with my education, but mm -hmm. this was where I belonged. This may come out wrong, but I'm glad I ended up embedded because had I continued where I was, I think I would have bored myself to tears. Yeah. Um, but is this because you've you've been successful and embedded? And of course you want to go back and tell yourself, yes, yeah, no, still embedded I was because I was successful. Yeah, I was successful in regular software. Okay. Um, right. It's just somehow making stuff move and turning lights on, not lights, 25 watt Shake lasers. Shake and blink and, and yep. uh, the physicality of it. Yeah. And, and trying to solve, trying to solve problems that aren't about, uh, can I make this compute this faster? Can I figure out a way to move these bits from this memory to this memory faster? Mm -hmm. More like, well, how do I figure out that this motor is in the right position? And how do I get it to move here without maybe shaking the whole system apart? It's just real stuff. And that just caught my interest a lot more after having started doing that than moving bits. Well, there's the application part too. Um, when you're moving big bits around, it's hard. Lots of little bits. or Right, lots of little bits. It's hard <laughs> to know, know what you're doing makes a difference. Uh -huh. Um the application of, of, okay, I made a database. Anybody can use the database. It's very cool. That's great. But what is it being used for? A shot spotter or, or, or children's toys or DNA scanners or even Bluetooth wearable th things. I can oh, look at can it. Oh, can I talk about Bluetooth say, wearable things? Please, 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 later. Let me talk about Bluetooth we'll, we'll, wearable we'll things. We'll put a pin in that for you. All right. Uh, <laughs> that was it, actually. I mean, just the embedded allows you to be application focused. Yeah. And, I don't think I'd have gotten that from any other software. Mm. Hmm. I like it. A rousing advertisement <laughs> for Embedded. And now, Dave, are you going to rant about Bluetooth? Go yes. Ahead. Thank you. Can I get everyone's opinion on this, right? I did a video unboxing, uh, and it wasn't really a review. It was like a first impressions. Like it was unboxing first impressions of the new Pebble Time smartwatch. And... That's exactly what it was, an unboxing first impressions. I gave you know, my raw first impressions of out of the box. Here it is. And wow, did I cop a lot of flack for this. Now, the reason I copped a lot of flack for it is because I, silly me, expected it to actually do something useful out of the box. Like maybe for me to like turn it on and be able to play with it and maybe set the time and look at the clock display because, you know, it's a watch. <laughs> and apparently, and I got attacked from every man and his dog for saying, you can't expect that. It's a smart watch. They don't work <laughs> out of the box. You've got to do everything. You've got to set it up, program it, update the firmware, do everything, you know, connect it to your Bluetooth phone and download the apps before you could do anything useful. It's a I'm smart watch, of those Do you rumors. guys agree? Like, I think what, like, and, and they go in, you have to, you expect that we expect this from a smart watch. And I'm... And my response is, why? Why can't it do something useful out of the box? I have to be careful here. Um, so Talk that, about <laughs> that one, though. Um, well, I, I will say I one thing in general, and this has this is kind of dry and boring, but one of the reasons that you have to 
often have to update the firmware right out of the box is because the product isn't finished when they manufacture it. This is like when That's they ship those problem. empty boxes of software. That is, that is I, their I'm, problem. I'm not is saying it's not, not it their problem. Not I'm problem just saying that that's the reason. Um, uh, yeah, no, I totally understand that. But I still think it's not a valid reason for people to think that things shouldn't work out of the box. I agree with that. And Dave people are this. talking about all no, smart I do. watches, I, I, I'm not just, just, saying not just why. Kickstarter projects. <laughs> right? Yeah, no. No, I, I concede that totally. totally so what agree. was the iWatch unboxing like? The iWatch, the Apple Watch unboxing. So... With this, I did have to pair it with my phone. It didn't do squat out of the box. Um, but they led you through it very nicely. But um, And it was kind of cool because they had a, a weird weird pattern on the screen that you held your phone up to, and it like did some pattern recognition to do the pairing. Right. So that was interesting, yep. but I would rather not have done it. But do you agree that why, like it should do something useful out of the box? Why can't it? Why should we expect modern gadgets like this not to do anything when you take them out of the box? Is that normal? From at the software, embedded software engineering in me is like, well, sure, as long as you're getting a Gen 2 or 3 of that product, no problem. Yes, right, it should work. Right. But Gen 1, it ships before my software is done, so all I can put in there is a bootloader and pray that it all still works when you open Should it, it ship before it's done? It has to. It has to because I don't the know hardware has, has to go why? to manufacturing. Why? Why does it has to? The, why, the hardware why goes to manufacturing to? way early in the schedule now compared to where the firmware is. Well, then yeah. I do need production hardware in order to finish some things. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Is I think it's because it's consumer, right? I mean, these the, just the timelines are so compressed these days. But there's always but that's more reason for it to do something out of the box because it's consumer. But the risk yeah. is you so high the, you, you that it will sit on there? shelves. Yeah, right. It's a survival thing. Yeah, I, the the conv- inconvenience that you're feeling as a consumer is nothing compared to cash flow. That's what I think it is. Right. Well, there's also, in order to finish the firmware, you have to have the production units. Yep. And you yep. can't start yep. a production run and then stop <laughs> and wait two weeks for the software to get their ass in but, gear. But, you know, going back to, to, to Dave's side here, this didn't used to be the case. No, this this is so just right. It's not that there's a universal truth that this has to happen. Yeah. But, but it didn't used to be a six month cycle either. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So right. did you no, did you buy the pebble or did they send it to you for free? No, I bought it. I was a and backer. I was a backer on their Kickstarter thing. This is one of the cool things about having a business and with the podcast. And for us the podcast is loosely advertising for our business. But everything's a business expense. Apple iWatches business expense yeah. oh yeah totally no i i certainly claim the pebble spark watch on business yeah so we say we don't make any money off these things but oh, well right. and uh, you did it for oh, video well, so that you that well, is well i saved business. i saved 28 percent of that whatever it costs yeah. 190 <laughs> bucks or 200 bucks it costs yeah so i got 20 percent of that back woohoo <laughs> oh, you know? i'm totally in yeah. favor of that because chris would have bought the apple watch anyway <laughs> it's it's competitive <laughs> research <laughs> Right. Yep. Anyway, I was just really like, like I, I didn't even think about it beforehand. I just sort of opened the box and I went, okay, it's turned off. I expected it to be turned off, but then when I turned it on, I expected to be able to play with it, like it, because it had firmware in there, right, to actually do, like to, you know, uh, to sync to your smartphone and everything. Why couldn't it just have a simple? You know, a demo app to at least play with the gadget you've just bought. I don't. I I just thought it was silly, and I said so. And yeah, everyone seemed to. Blah, no, it bought out all the smartwatch fanboys. You know, geez, I, I found a I new don't crowd. Understand. Of, uh, yeah, I don't whew. understand getting getting on your case about that. That that seems. Yeah, it seems, it just seems silly. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, I don't get it either. No, when right. when the software updates then the next time people get those watches, it will be fine. They will have a demo. Right, right. Well, apparently, right, they were saying that like the previous Pebble watch, when they first got it from the Kickstarter, had multiple clock faces, for example. This one has one, and it's analog, and it doesn't even have Roman numerals on it. It's, It's just crap, right? So they've actually gone backwards from the previous one to what they install in there in default. And by default, and everyone's... 
well, I, a lot of people on uh, the comments are their excuse is or well, their reason behind that is well, you shouldn't include different things in there by default because that's just bloatware then. But you guys, you, you know, guys like don't temporary bloatware. You guys don't make hardware that you ship out to people that that they have to attach a bunch of blue wires before it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're called kits, you know, and you sell them as kits, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I mean, it's in, advertised in, as a kit. You expect it not to work out of the box. In my past, it's never been. I mean, but but the timelines are just different, right? I mean, there's so you know, industrial products, eighteen month, twenty four month cycles. You know, if that, maybe more. Dave was in military. You know, like that. Like <laughs> yeah, you deliver five it's, years. it is finished, and you're going to be able to make it for twenty years. Like that's just what yeah. you do. So I think that, I think that's just the difference here. I think, and I think the expectation is 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 raised by, you know, the Apples and the Samsungs of the world, but I don't know. Yeah, because they could turn that wheel so much faster. Right. But I think it's a poor direction we're headed in if people expect things not to be polished and work out of the box. And you have to set them up and go all techie and know how to, you know, Bluetooth connect your phone to your gadget. Like, I just, I, like, I'm I can't. I'm surprised by that it's view a, by you, It's Dave. a thin edge of the web wedge, you know? Yeah, I know, right? You think like if anyone would understand it, it'd be me, right? Yeah. But uh, no, when I buy a watch and I take it out of the box, I want it to tell the freaking time. I don't expect <laughs> the time to be correct, of course. But I, but it, yeah, I did. Exactly. It's called the Pebble Time Smartwatch. No, you bought it. You bought a those, those, those words don't mean what they said they mean. Right. right. <laughs> you bought a dev platform. <laughs> An early I, back I, of I know. dev platform. Right. Silly you me. You bought a Bluetooth oh. gadget. You bought a computer yeah. with a Bluetooth uh, attached. And that's what everyone's saying. <laughs> I didn't buy a watch. I bought a phone gadget. You that's bought like, a, a Cortex-based uh, timepiece, eventually. Uh, <laughs> but this is one of the complaints uh, that you've had about the Internet of Things all along, at least here, is the, the, the techie requirement of, oh, you have to connect this to something. You have to know how to, <laughs> to uh, provision something. Connect it to your Wi-Fi. Connect it to your phone. And I, it hasn't gotten any better. I don't think. It doesn't seem like it now. And yet the market is exploding. No, by I don't these think it things. has. No, I expected it to. You know, it's been how many years has it been since the whole Internet of Things? Three you know, or four maybe. Yeah, at I, least it's three. like yeah. Okay, so I have one new data point on all this stuff, which is now having worked on web stuff, where the the assumption is someone comes in, you can't explain them anything, or else they're going to go somewhere else. That's like the absolute minimum of time. I think there's still a balance between that, though, and like having a product where you still have to set it up. You have like a guide to set it up. I think I think there's still always going to be that just because, like you guys met, uh, alluded to, the Pebble Time team doesn't have a thousand engineers like Samsung does. You know, there is they no sold problem. a million smartwatches over the last year and, or half. At what margin, half. Dave? I mean, they like, sold on, a million smartwatches. You're a telling me they don't have the resources? No. Oh, come on. What is their there margin? Are they're, mil- they're a couple hundred million dollar company, and you're telling me they don't company. have the resources. They're a Kickstarter but they're, No, they're not. Okay. They're a couple of hundred million dollar company. They're huge. You want to find out how many employees software. they have? Right, Exactly. Money it doesn't, does it doesn't change space time, right? Chris, Alicia, come on. Software people, no. help me out here. <laughs> the, the, the more, often well, the more people you buy onto a project, the slower it goes. Exactly. exactly. Well, yeah, because yeah, somebody okay. there said, we Granted. have to localize this. And so now we can put even less in the initial install base because the first time you download stuff, you're going to have to download all the character set you need. And yeah. so now instead of having four watch faces, you have one watch face because it doesn't have any localization needs. It's the dumbest simplest face you can give or a month before shipping apple releases ios 8.4 and they've got to scramble to understand that sdk and change all their code around that talks to something because they changed yep. the bluetooth api yeah, but it's just all these stuff that's happening so they have later. no control over no i'm sorry it's just poor upfront design <laughs> to not have a good out of the box experience you can design that in and sure okay, if you need to change the firmware later, okay, well, you you know, that's part of the update procedure. But that's no reason to ruin I think the, I think a good out-of-box experience. I think the reason you're get, you got attacked and the reason you're getting attacked here, because I am attacking if there's any clarity, if there's any Fine. <laughs> misconception here, uh, <laughs> it's because this is Dave Consumer versus Dave Engineer, I think. I think. And that's how I did the unboxing. Yeah, I bought okay. a watch and I expected, I wasn't expect. I didn't buy a kit. 
right? right? I didn't buy a development platform. I didn't buy a phone gadget. I bought yeah. a watch. And well, I could not is... turn it on and play with it out of the box. I was disappointed. This is the right? It's, it's not the end of the world, yeah. right? It's not the end of the world, but I'm just saying I'm disappointed and it's a poor direction the industry's headed if people take this as like expected. Then everyone's going to just, just do piss poor products right out of the box. Oh, we can fix it later in firmware. I think it's a, it's a dangerous direction. I think a more dangerous direction is how secure and how private is that data. Yeah. I would rather people be talking about whether or not I can hack your watch by walking by a few times. Oh, totally. Yeah. Whether or not your initial experience was great. A totally different argument. That's a non sequitur, though. That was totally totally a non sequitur. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I wonder if you rant about something else. So I was... <laughs> Teeing you up. Uh, uh, Next okay. time on anyway. the Amp Hour. Yes. <laughs> Are you guys focused ah. on security a lot in your work? Not these days. Not yeah. a lot. Bluetooth and... security comes up occasionally. Uh, yes, that's it's a so brave bad. new world. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> Um, I always feel like with all this stuff, it's just, yeah. I, I, like, I, I, I understand that all of the data can be back calculated to understand where I've been, what I've been doing, all these other things, but it's just like, ugh, I, I don't care what my, you know, Bluetooth earpiece has been doing, you know, like I, I know that they're like all these crazy hacks, like, uh, Sammy, what's his, I forget Sammy's last name, but you know, like that one where he was sniffing packets off a keyboard in the, yes. oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, there, there was uh, talk about this on the forum the other day. The new Altium Circuit Maker software, right? Somebody in the forum um, realized that there's huge security vulnerability in it, and it looks like you can actually download files to people's machines Yeesh. through some, you know, back channel or something that through some security lapse in the Altium because it's not encrypted or something. I don't know. And who at uh, Altium is going to details, think hard but... about? Securing a tool, yeah. There's mm, so many, but there's just so many vectors mm. for this kind of stuff. That yeah, um. So yeah, I'm not necessarily blaming them, but you know, like yeah, apparently there is a big security vuln, or there's yeah. a security vulnerability there, and you know, apparently this guy says, yeah, I can dump files on your machine. Well, you all know, these like, things, it mm, feels like geez. it just feels like a lot of it's with the security in, in mind. It's just or I'll be thinking we've been talking about even the software updates stuff like that. It's like everybody's being asked to do more with less. And when do you have time to focus on these things, right? Security or out of the box type stuff. If you don't have big teams or resources. Yeah, and it's not part of the plan. You don't need a big team yeah. or resources. You just need to have that as a focus. I think what you Am need right? is the person. The person who says, no, we are not compromising. This is not a group project. This is not mediocrity. Yeah. You need yeah. some ass kicking. You need some, you know, someone to come along and say, this must be right. And we're going to make sure this is right. Yeah. yeah. And then they make it happen. Otherwise, everyone, you know, like, eh, you know, engineers and, and programmers like us, we just go, oh, yeah, you know, who cares if, you know, we'll just do whatever we think. You know, if there's nobody driving us, we'll do whatever we want. And go, oh, yeah, if we need a firmware update out of the box and it doesn't work, hey, who cares? It's, you know. A lot of engineers don't really appreciate what a product manager can do. But if you've ever True. worked with a really great product person... Mm-hmm. It's worth it because the product ends up being having all these sanded yes. these edges sanded off, and it just feels correct. Nice. Well, what about yep. the engineers who uh, know what we should be doing but can't because they're not making the decision? <laughs> they're not listened to. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of us who know yeah, what. Yeah, right sometimes thing you is. scream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've encountered that. You know, because I'm always <laughs> this may come as a shock to people, but I'm always the guy here within the company who puts his hand up and goes, "Hey, I think we should do this." I think it's really important. <laughs> Here's why. And, you know, yeah, go away, Dave. Like, shut up. That just, you know, screws up something. Just go away. <laughs> it's so demoralizing when that happens. I don't even think yeah, the managers is. understand uh, that those are the incidents that make us leave jobs. Yeah, right, yep. exactly. It's yeah, not yeah, like, it's, it's not the, oh, I didn't get a 3% raise, I only got a 2% no, raise. No, no, it, it doesn't it's matter. Not, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> It's all those yep. times when it's... I had a good idea or a really important thing and you just said, nah. Right. Yes. It's 
we don't have time. Not 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 necessarily saying no. I don't mind that, but not giving a crap, right? Like not caring and not listening and trying to understand and then going no. I don't mind that right. if they listen to it and and listen to all my explanation and my reasoning behind it and they go, "Okay, yeah, I've carefully considered it." You know, no, and here's why. You know, and, and fair enough. You know, but when they just ignore you and tell you to shut up and go in the corner, you know, and don't yep. rock the boat, that's, yeah, yeah. That's when you want to go, yeah, this company's not really great to work for. I think I'll go elsewhere. I had the opposite experience at a couple of companies. I was Mr. No. They would always, uh, <laughs> right. the, 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 the thought leaders would come up with, oh, we have this great idea for doing this. And I'd say, no, you can't do that because at these places it was either illegal or impossible. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know I, that felt bad too because i felt like i had was continually saying no you can't do that your idea is it's just guys, something you can't do physics so, I, guys i i get that <laughs> reputation all the time i get accused of that all the time you're just a naysayer dave yep. you're just a naysayer you know because dave you are a naysayer I'm a bloody engineer. I'm a practical <laughs> design engineer. I know when things are going to work and when they're not. I have a gut feel for it, you know, and mm, then right. I can prove it to you, you know. Right, right. <laughs> and, yeah, yet I'm always a naysayer, you know. <laughs> like, Saying yeah. no is important, especially those kinds of things. But Sorry? that's another instance where you can get steamrolled and somebody will say, do it anyway, or it's critical, <laughs> and you're like, yep. yeah, that's nice, could you type it in? Because I don't want to go to jail. Um. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've 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 had to do that. Except the jail part. I've you know like I've had to have them like send me a formal email telling me to do it because I know shit's going to come back on me. You know. Well, this is depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should. And to think, I was thinking recently that I, I sort of miss a team and a, a real job. But now, not so much. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like yeah, a yeah, team. This is like a four-person crazy team right. right here. Yeah, we should make smartwatches with great out-of-the-box experiences. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know. On the outside, we'll say open at noon, and we'll just put a cardboard thing <laughs> in there. It'll be really pretty, yeah. but it will be fixed I was gonna, yeah, what, what about like the, the, the plastic covering that has the fixed time on it? Like that's a great out-of-the-box experience, right? That's how watches <laughs> right. used to do it. You peel it off and you just turn it on, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Have you noticed that um, when you do work for companies like that, you always tend to gravitate towards the groups where, you know, a similar mindset to you. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not it's not that you're going to hang out with those no engine, those no managers, you know. You have to because otherwise you'd go crazy. You, yeah, you can't exactly. find anybody of like mind. That that's the places that you don't last long at. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Right. And and that's why I've often stayed at a job for so long and I look back and say, Well, why did I stay there? That was just a batshit crazy company, you know? And but it was because, yeah, I I enjoyed the people that I hung around with, you know, and worked with. Mm. Um We have it on and, tape, yeah. folks. Dave enjoys some people. <laughs> I do enjoy some social interaction. Yeah, now I just sit in a windowless office all on my own every day. Yep. It is funny how a lot of times engineers, even I will say, I don't want to really interact with people. And yet that is the part I miss yep. about working in a team or the people. Yep. I remember once yeah. I was in a job interview and they said, can you describe your perfect job? And I said, well, it, I would have a huge library you would shove pieces of paper with problems under the door, puzzles or information questions, and I would have a time limit and give it back to you. This, by the way, is not the correct answer to that question. The answer is always this exact job you just described to me. Yes. So basically you said, I'd like to be put in a cell for eight hours a yeah. day? I would like to have be a Turing machine. Yeah. <laughs> You can't have that now. Open, <laughs> open offices are everywhere. They can't oh, find you a cell. So awful. <laughs> That's another thing that'll God. keep me from going back to a full job. Yep. A death for an engineer. Open plan <laughs> offices. Well, we do have we do have a lot of listeners that are on their own, and we we salute. I I'm thinking of surveys past, and I salute the uh, the solos the solos out there. It can be it can be tough, you know. Like hopefully. 
hopefully the embedded podcast hopefully the empower podcast uh hopefully we seem like the annoying co-workers that are on the other side of your cubicle just for a little we'll bit keep of you company at lunch <laughs> yeah once a i'll week. never once i'll never week. use the uh, conference call feature on my phone yeah right, right. <laughs> every outro is just yeah yeah no we should go fishing this weekend no 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 we'll take my boat this time <laughs> no 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 How, how's the wife <laughs> can, can you hear me yeah i think i lost you can you hear me <laughs> no i'm going to lunch later i'm going to lunch later don't worry don't worry morty yeah okay <laughs> Yeah, I said. Next Anyways, but I, <laughs> we're not. No, we're, we've lost it. It's all. What right. I what I did want to say is that uh, first off, thanks to you guys for being on the show. We got to wrap up. Uh, second off, f- fill out the listener survey. Was, was this the show? <laughs> no, we're not done this yet. There's, the, yeah, there's still the outro. Show? No, I think we're not done. <laughs> that, the no, whole, the whole like previous time was the show. We're on the way out, Chris. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is the process. Yeah, we are. Okay. Okay. All right. So, like, when did we'll you think it was off, starting? Like, we're I, I didn't One, think we had started. Two, three. But you laughed at me before when we were trying to <laughs> resync the damn show for count doing a countdown time yeah. sync. Yeah. Okay. Well, Alicia, Chris, thanks for being back on. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Six. And congratulations. This is a great show. Thank you. We love you guys. Thank you very much. You do have a great show as well. All right, guys. Bye. 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 Are you back? Okay, are we in sync? I'm back. Can everyone count down with me? Three, Three two, two, one. one. <laughs> Chris, where are you? Wait a minute. Three, I didn't have to do you two, did this last time too. One. <laughs> <laughs> we had, yeah, we were just what? like, let's, all right, let's just start counting. And I'm, I'm like, what, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> what? So I was so you, you, <laughs> Counting confuses you? You need to yes. watch Sesame Street, dude. Apparently. <laughs> I was so confused. I was just like, what What are we supposed to do? <laughs> Countdown. Sorry. Three, two, two, two one. one. Go. There we go. We're all in sync. Yay. Uh, what the hell were we talking about?